Today I want to talk with you real briefly about the depth modes. Now there are three depth modes currently supported by Hueforge. There's dynamic depth mode, clipped depth mode, and static depth mode. Now a lot of people don't know what these mean and what they are, so I'm just going to go through them real quickly and see how they'll affect your prints. First, we'll go with dynamic depth. That is the default. It's the one that seems to act the way that most people believe it should act. Now, the blending depth is the depth between is the amount of space between the min depth and the max depth. That is where all of your color blending occurs. If your max depth was four tall and your uh, min depth was one tall, you'd have a three millimeter blending depth. So in any case, uh, that depth is what changes. The min depth will never be changed. So if I drop this top slider in dynamic depth mode, you can see that not just the top of the mesh changes, but the whole mesh changes. It's as if we've shrunk the blending depth. And that effect occurs until we get this slider down below this slider here. This slider now is the top slider, and now it controls the depth of the mesh. All right, so that's recalculating the blending depth. The blending depth actually changes. That's why we have an actual depth, or one of the reasons we have an actual depth in there. As you shrink this, you can see that the actual depth goes down by each layer height. So that is dynamic depth. Clipped depth doesn't change the blending depth, but it does change how high the blending depth can go. So once you get to the top slider, it just clips off the top. That's why it's called clip depth. So you'll see as I come down, it's going to start lowering the height of things. And let me let me exaggerate this a bit. So it's coming straight flat. If I bring the wire the wireframe on, you can see that these are flat peaks now here. And if I bring this up, so it doesn't change. You can see how none of the mesh below it changes. Only this part of the mesh changes and grows, right? Now, static depth is what it says. Static. It's always calculating the mesh the same way. It doesn't matter what you do to the slider. Now, this can confuse people because they'll bring these white sliders all the way down to just on top of this gray slider and expect the blending to change. And if you were in clip depth or, or dynamic depth, especially in dynamic depth, it would change tremendously, right? We'd get just a little bit of white over here at the very peaks and we'd get gray over here. But even in clip depth, it wouldn't change the mesh calculation. So it would change the coloration a little bit. You'd see a, a change, it would use a flattening of the color. You'd have less, as I bring this up, you're gonna get, you're gonna see that there's highlights in places that you didn't have before, but it basically stays very flat in clip depth mode. And then, but in static depth mode, it doesn't care how tall this slider is. Nothing's going to change about the overall mesh. Basically, it's always acting as if this slider is all the way to the top. So that's how the three depth modes work. Dynamic depth changes the whole mesh as you adjust the topmost slider. Clip depth just chops off the top, and static depth leaves it the same. Hopefully, this is helpful and helps you understand more about Hueforge.